Warren is gonna cut up our durian. And Not only does he wrap, but he can also cut durian. And let's smell the... Yeah, you smell yeah, it. Yeah, Angelo, have smell it. <laughs> hey, I have an idea. <laughs> squirrel! Hey, squirrel, we have something nice and wonderful. You wanna smell? I don't think he's gonna smell it. Mmm, look at that. Can you smell that? <laughs> He immediately said, no, no, I'm not having any part of that. I think you don't need a knife. What do you mean you don't need a knife? <laughs> you need a karate chop, Warren? I'm for more karate, so... Okay. Well, Warren is actually a boxer when his spare time, but I don't know about um, Karate Kid. So this is how you cut a durian. I don't know how to cut a durian. All I know about is eating it. It looks like that rind looks a little soft. And look at that. It's turning a little brown. So I'm kind of worried that this one got a little overripe maybe. Or I think it's okay. Yeah, it's not exactly gentle brain surgery. Oh. What? Ooh. Ooh. Why? Are there like freaking like worms and maggots in there? Ooh la la. Ooh la la. Oh no. Oh, no. It's oh, overripe. overripe. It looks overripe. <laughs> <laughs> but this is part. So just. Oh. oh, sorry. So just remove the ones that are good and put it in here. That's still looks good. Yeah, it's still pretty decent, as it were. Not that bad. That's actually pretty nice. That one, I don't know. That one, I would probably discard. <laughs> bring you some home here you put inside here. Now I'm gonna eat it! All so of it? it? Yeah. As much as I can. <laughs> Man, you horny after that. Gonna get what? Let's get a spoon. Stupid. Gonna get gory after that? He said horny. Oh, horny? <laughs> well, I don't think durian is an aphrodisiac. Yeah, I don't think so either. Okay, that's good. But in Ben's world, it is. Okay, don't, you don't want to get the the black part. Yeah. Okay. Okay, that's not good anymore. Okay. Uh, yeah. Take the so, seat up. Sometimes you play a roll of the dice here when you buy a durian. Overripe. So after one day, it had gotten overripe, which is kind of sad. Yeah, that's good. Yep, that's not good. Uh. Oh, okay. And I want you to know. This is a team effort, huh? I know, a team effort of quality control just to slice one durian. But I could tell that like the shell didn't look as good today than it did yesterday. That's why I was like, ugh. Yeah. It looks like a little molten, but that looks wonderful. Yeah, right put there. that here. That Ooh, good. look at that. Oh. Now that looks good. Is so, there more? There's, there's more a, one more pod. Oh, there is? There's always some secret yeah, no. pods when you're talking about durian, right? There's like another pod here secret. and another pod there. Yeah. Hideaway? Every durian has secret pods. You just have to know where to slice them. Oh! Don't you oh. That looks pretty good. There's a part that's a little blackened, but look at that. Nice, um, deep yellow color. Now, I don't really know what varietal of durian this is. I can't tell you that, but, Wait, um, the... you might want to take the blackened part out. Yeah, with the seed. At least we'll the seed. There you go. Okay. All right. Ooh. It's so durian. Is there another lunch. pod hidden? I think so. Yeah, there might right. be one here. <laughs> no, I don't yeah. think so. I think those yeah, are all yeah. the pods. You can always slice some more to figure them out. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's okay. Suction. It's Put the anesthesia on. <laughs> there's nothing there. <laughs> well, there's no anesthesia. I mean, the patient's already long dead. <laughs> 
This Bye. is practically an autopsy. There's nothing. Yeah, there's nothing. I think he may have gotten all the pods. I think those are all the pods. No, there's still a lot of good durian left. So I'm gonna see if I can eat an almost an entire durian on camera. There's a mukbang sort of situation we've got here. Mukbang. All right, we have our durian that's already been deshelled or out of the pods or whatever you want to call it. So, well, in the local snorte, we I can't really. It's all right. Durian here in the Philippines, no one really eats this stuff, and I can tell you that not many family like eating it and some big old fly. So, let's see. I. They smell the durian. Ah! You know, you could get some bagon. <laughs> Bygone? What is that? Or bygone. Bygone. <laughs> <laughs> it's like bay leaves. <laughs> so you gotta eat during with a fork and spoon. Well, because you don't want to ha your hands to smell. So let's have, taste this wonderful custard, right? I got some here. And it's mainly just sweet. It's not as super sweet though as usual. But there's some nice caramel nutty notes though. One thing I really like about durian is it kind of has like a um, caramelized onion creme brulee sort of taste that's sometimes a little rummy. And this durian has been um, ripening for off the tree for a few days. And just so happens today it kind of went a little south but we salvaged a lot of d good durian. And of course there are always flies that go over it because they... Depending on what your nose receptors tell you, it kind of smells like rotting corpses. Now you're going to find me a little cheeky for saying this, but I don't mind the smell of durian, which is, you'll say, well, usually there's an old adage, durian smells like hell, but tastes like heaven. But to me, durian does not really have a bad smell. Now, I say that, of course, because when you're in Southeast Asia, and especially when you've been around Southeast Asia for quite a while, and knowing where durian are sold, especially by the streets or by the night market, it just tastes, it just smells like the street. So some people, it smells like sewers and such. So in that respect, it's like, well, it, it smells like the streets of Southeast Asia to me. So it's practically okay, you know? You get used to the smell. Or hot garbage. Hot garbage? It smells like hot garbage, but it's really good. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Durian can smell like hot garbage, too. But to me, it just, it just smells like fertilizer and the street. Those two things put together. It's not bad. And then there's like a sweet smell to it. There's something that's unexplainably sweet. So, I mean, durian is like, you know, they always say it's a love them or hate them type of fruit. Uh, I remember the very first time I had durian, and I just thought it tasted good or decent, but it didn't really have a pronounced taste until I went to Thailand. Um, and that's when I really loved durian, even though some people will say, well, montong durian, ugh. Oh, all you get is one-dimensional sweetness, right? Or like it tasting like a chocolate bar. But you know what? I like that. Um... What was I going to say? Ah, oh, yeah. So durian in the Philippines. Um, it's still a very misunderstood fruit in the Philippines. Not a lot of people eat it. Are there um, any health benefits? Yeah, there are health benefits. I'll get to that. Oh, sorry. But it's, it mainly helps with digestion. So if you... Having trouble going, it's not a, it's a good fruit to eat. And it just, it, I mean, it smells like fecal product to you. It, it might just help you, you know, go easier. And Squirrel there, one of our dogs, didn't like the smell of durian either. Although his reaction was not very, um, well, shall I say, the exaggerated one I've been looking for as far as a meme going, goes. Hmm. So, okay, now, durian, 
is typically thought of you associate a place with a fruit as um, endemic to Davao. And Davao, of course, is known as the country's fruit basket, not just for durian, but also for mangosteen, banana, and cacao, cacao beans. So, I mean, a lot of things are grown in Davao. And the weather and the environment are favorable for durian growing. Because, for one thing, there's no real pronounced wet or dry season in Davao. And it doesn't, it's kind of way off the typhoon trail. So, it doesn't, it gets rain year-round, but not a whole lot. And durian trees typically don't like standing water. And you are supposed to put them, if you try to grow them, you should put them by a slope. So that the water, when it rains, doesn't stand in one place. It just, you know, filters on it, moseys on its way down. Hey, squirrel. You want some durian? Maybe you've changed your mind, huh? No? No? Are you getting closer? You want, you want me to feed you some durian? No? Mm? Okay. Mm. Okay, I'm kind of going off track. But, yeah, Duri uh, Davao is known as the Durian capital. There aren't that many regions around the country, around the Philippines, that grow durian. And we are way up in the north, in Ilocos Norte, and I've heard rumblings that they try to make the municipality of Adams, which is known for waterfalls and wild berries they make uh, wine out of, they're kind of wanted to turn that place into the fruit basket of Ilocos Norte. Now, they've done that with dragon fruit in um, nearby Burgos, uh, near where the windmill farms are. Um, but I think here in Ilocos, again, there is a very pronounced dry and wet season. I'm not sure if durian will thrive here as much, but for what it's worth, well, actually know where the during comes from, whether it's Davao or elsewhere in the country. But it's relatively cheap. One of those big fruits we'll get is like about, runs you about 500 to 600 pesos, which is kind of expensive, you know, by Filipino standards. Um, but we're also talking in US dollars about eh, 11 to 12 dollars a fruit. Pretty good value. And the time I'm filming this is in late October. And durian season in Davao we typically runs from August to right about late October. We're just sort of filming, filming this. So we're on the tail end of the durian season in the Philippines. And if it wasn't for the pandemic, that's where I would be right now, especially when it came to to August and they have this very famous um, festival and parade that revolves around the durian harvest. I've, the name is slipping off kind of it's not I can't recall what the name is of that festival but it's a massive deal in Davao. And me and my fear of Thunderstorms, and I don't know if I'm afraid of typhoons, really, but I'm so afraid of those, too, I guess. That it would have been a nice refuge from all that inclement weather, potentially inclement weather. But very, very dry season here in your local snort day, for a wet season. Hmm. By the way, this fruit's really filling. And to be honest with you, I have never eaten a durian by itself in one sitting. <laughs> but I'm attempting to. Now, I've heard a lot of stories of durian. That you cannot mix durian with alcohol. 
And so when I was in Thailand, I asked one of our drivers, he said, asked him, is it true you cannot drink dur eat durian and drink any alcoholic beverage? And he was basically saying, well, yeah. Um, I have not really read any scientific proof about it, but basically... Durian is a warming fruit, so the m more you eat it, it warms your body temperature up. I got a seed, so I can't really talk about it now. Hmm. There's proof that I'm eating in my durian. There you go. And really, to me, it just tastes like cream. Like I said, creme brulee, which I absolutely adore. Creme brulee with like a splash of rum occasionally. Something rummy about it. And... Okay, the story about durian, remember the alcohol, yeah, yeah. So, alcohol also warms up your body temperature a bit. And not to the extent it will give you a fever or anything like that, but... Supposedly, if you make those two things, you eat, consume those two things simultaneously, your body goes into shock, practically, over the temperature, and then something bad could happen to you. What? Dang it, Ben, I'm busy. Well, anyway, so I'm no by no means a durian connoisseur, even though I love the fruit. I mean, that's all I ever get to talking about. Whenever we, there's a fruit stand that we pass by on the way back to Pidig from Lawag on the way, I always look for durian. And sometimes I can't take it home because other than JP and Ben... And several others here. Nobody eats durian, let alone can withstand the smell of durian. And there's a funny story I have. Um, so about three years ago, when I came here to the Philippines, the first time, that was the first time I tried durian too. And we were going to travel from Manila to Pidig, all the way up north here in Ilocos Norte. And I bought durian for myself, and I ate it there, a piece of it. And of course, like I told you, I have never eaten a whole durian in one sitting, which I'm attempting to do now. Albeit minus the overripe bits. Hmm. So... That durian has a life, it had a life of its own. I mean, even while it was open. So I kept it on to kind of snack on. And we took that road trip, and we made some stops through Pampanga, through Manawag in Pangasinan, which is famous for the Our Lady of Manawag Cathedral, where they say that the apparition of the Virgin Mary appeared and performed miracles, of course, and they built a cathedral on that site. Uh, I didn't take it in, by the way. <laughs> Just to be very clear. And then we made a beeline to Baguio, as in the Manila in the mountains. That's what I like to call it. And that place, Baguio, is a weird place. Why is it I find it weird? Well, it's not just Manila in the mountains. It's, um, it's a lot cooler than at sea level with all the humidity. So you don't feel the humidity. But there's no breeze in that place. It, so it's it's a kind of weird static cool and yet you can see the clouds float on by with reckless abandon and yet feel no wind where you are um situated 5000 i don't know 4 to 5000 feet above sea level i think it's 4000 feet practically but yeah we took our durian there too and the durian was sitting out there on the balcony and then the ants that were there 
didn't even touch the durian in the bag, not even daring to encroach on the plastic. And we took it with us again. And we stopped in Vigan from the way from Baguio, so through the way through La Union and to Vigan. And Ilocosur is in the Spanish heritage town of Vigan. Finally, making our way to Ilocos Norte in Pit Dig. In which we dared relatives, if they could eat one pot of durian, we would give them 50 U.S. dollars. 2,500 pesos, uh, roughly speaking. No one wanted to eat. No one wanted to take the challenge, ever. And it goes to show you that durian is still a very, very much misunderstood fruit in the Philippines. So... I've not been to Davao yet. I can imagine people there are absolutely durian mad. But elsewhere here in the country, eh, you have a lot more, a much more tepid reaction to durian. But you know what? People eat it up here. And people sell it. People get it. Whatever. And sometimes these durian are dirt cheap. We once bought a durian here for less than 200 pesos, one of this size. And that was in March or April. So it was one of those like freak occurrences where we were able to get durian. I'm pretty good durian. Mm. So that was what I was hoping for. If there wasn't a for a pandemic, August, September, I would be in Davao snacking on durian, and I can kind of tell you the differences in the varietals and such. So I don't really know what this is, but I think given the size, and I've, I've, I'm comparing off of pictures, it looks like an Alcon fancy durian, based off what I could tell from pictures. Let's see if you can tell from pictures. There we go. So I've only had durian, but I think this must be like the eighth time I've had durian. I really, really dig this fruit. Hmm. Slipped off my fingers. Uh, and I think I have some sort of, you know, precedent as to kind of like a predisposal to liking durian. So back home in the States... I was really into craft beer, as in like um, India Pale Ales, but my favorites are always the really strong, high alcoholic, high gravity uh, bourbon arrow, bleh, sorry, bourbon barrel aged Russian Imperial Stouts. I love those. They have like these deep chocolate coffee, caramel taste that can get um, quite boozy. And for me, durian kind of shares such a similar profile. But there's like a savoriness about it too, where it's like roasted garlic, caramelized onions, things that you could get out of like double India Pale Ale. And India Pale Ale, that style of beer that's kind of bitter, has like a very profound malt backbone in certain cases, like especially East Coast IPAs. They're less juicy, we would say, or less about the grapefruit taste and more about the malt backbone. Yeah. Durian happens to kind of be in the confluence of the taste profile I'm looking for in beer. And it has that here when it comes to um, this fruit. And I'm also kind of predisposed into enjoying scotch and bourbon. Those are my favorite, like, hard liquor poisons. Oh, same for brandy as well. So a lot of the notes I find in those alcoholic beverages, I find in durian. So as acquired of a taste as this was, I guess, the second time I really loved it. 
first time I was really, eh, I didn't love it. I didn't hate it. I definitely didn't hate it. I liked it enough to want to try it again. But to me, it was so tepid. It just tasted like custard with a light dressing of butterscotch. Until I went to Thailand and I ate Montong durian. It has like that chocolate bar sort of taste going for it with creme brulee profile that I'm getting from here. I'm getting a more, out of like Philippine durians here that I've tried, they have more of a caramel creme brulee slight rum taste. Now the exciting thing about durian is and what I've heard is there are five tastes of durian. Of course there's your sweet and then I've already said about the alcoholic. I think you can get the sweet and the alcoholic from this durian. But then there are also bitter notes and then also um, floral, as in like uh, sort of like the flowery notes. And then there's a very curious fifth flavor. It's called numbing flavor. And I read about there's a farmer in Malaysia in uh, the island of Penang who goes by the name of Durian Seng. And from my understanding, I actually didn't say red. I really saw a video, several videos about him. And basically, during the thick of durian season in Malaysia, I think it runs from June to August, if I'm not mistaken, is that he presents you a durian that had just fallen off the tree in a cargo net. And then he has to... Um, let the durian fall from his hands and hit the ground as it would naturally. And the chemical composition of durian is so volatile that even a minute change in time, a minute change in how it's treated, changes the makeup and the ter therefore the taste of the durian. So the whole goal is to get all five tastes at once. Which I think is really remarkable, really special. It's really quite something. But yeah, I'm really enjoying this durian too. Um, like I said, I really don't know. I'm not really in a connoisseur of durian yet. As far as what I can tell you or how distinguished all those other tastes. But, you know, once I kind of expose myself to more durian it'll be kind of like taking up craft beer as a hobby or um drinking um liquor as a hobby and kind of comparing it hmm. i'm enjoying it really am and the flavors are not very strong this way it's just really refined creme brulee i'm not really Getting like funk in mouth and so on. Um, this might be the most boring during reaction video you've ever seen. And thank you for keeping this long. Saying this long. And I think when you see those during reaction videos, especially when they're filmed in the States, they really, they really don't get a fruit that's really as fresh. I think if, if you get a really fresh fruit, the smell is not as intense or like hot garbage as JP was saying it's kind of smells a bit fruity and you still get the same sort of you know pungent aroma but I sincerely don't think it's a bad smell sincerely hmm I'm getting closer to that seed I'm really getting more of like a roasted garlic flavor. Now, if you don't like roasted garlic and fruit and find it, and I think it's all about expectation too. Because when you say, hey, I'm eating fruit, I expect something that's sweet or something that's tart, you know, if we're talking about citrus. But never ever thinking you would get 
savory notes. And some durian kind of taste a bit more like cheese. So I think it's a matter of expectation and also freshness. I think later on I'll try to plant some here. Right about where past that tree line is over there. Right where it starts to slope a little bit. But I think with durian is... I think they're really finicky trees as well, from what I've read. Like, they don't like sharing with too many other trees, I guess you could say. For the same water, and so on. Okay, I'm on the last piece and then the last seed here. And like I was saying before, this was a bit overripe. So there are parts of it that weren't as good. And it makes me wonder how much of it kind of comes because of transport, you know. The fact that it took an extra day to ripe and so on, kind of went south fast, eh? That's what I was saying about the chemical composition of durian being volatile as it is. Hmm. Boss pod. All right. So now that I've kind of said my piece about durian, for those of you who have watched this far enough, far along, I think I'll tell you about where I am with the channel. And so this is late October that I'm filming this. So some of you who joined my channel or subscribed to my channel early on know basically I do food and travel content. Um, and of course, because of the pandemic, I was kind of delving into more of the cooking, hence, you know, dad's recipes, Lolo Lito's Pinoy Kitchen. Um, so we're kind of in the stage of this um, pandemic or such, in which now... Let me preface this in a better way. I did not really intend on making a cooking channel. Uh, and part of it, you know, when we decided to move to the Philippines wasn't really a moving decision. It was more about traveling. We were wanted to travel uh, for quite a bit. And of course, because of, you know, the pandemic, we haven't really been able to travel as much except to, you know... Um, Certain localities, and usually it's like running errands and, you know, going to parties and yeah, things of that sort. Um, I was planning on doing a more involved cooking series. Especially doing um, non-Filipino food, how you can cook it in the province with the ingredients that are available to us. I did an episode on Korean fried chicken. I have not published that as of now, but I'll get to that. Um, I think I'm going to nix that series. And because I, uh, I can't say conclusively that I will. But I think as more provinces are opening up for leisure travel, um, I want to... Reorient the content of this blog back to travel um, and also food content while on our travels. So that's what I'm hoping for. Um, I'm really going to see what what places we can go to. I think Ilocos Norte, of course, is a very good bet. 
or around the Ilocos region is a very good bet. So going to Pangasinan, for example, in covering content there, I think that's very good. Um, Baguio isn't, might be, but I think because they are still somewhat dangerous for us, and especially Dad, he's 83 years old. Um, I don't want to put him in an area where he's at s some measurable risk. Whereas here in the Ilocos region, especially here in the Ilocos Norte, cases are, you know, for the most part have been way down. There's only like a couple of active cases as of now. So knock on wood, hopefully that continues and we're kind of gotten through the worst of it here. But yeah, um, I'm looking forward to doing more travel content for you. And especially from a real Filipino-American perspective, and I mean that saying that both my parents are Filipino, kind of grew up in America, and for me, I have so many different backgrounds as far as, I'm not, I'm not talking about um, ethnic or cultural or racial. I mean it as far as like, different background different conceits I would say so you know I didn't really grow up as a typical Filipino American child into typical Filipino American interests um I don't really like Joe Koi I don't like Rex Navarrete I'm more into like I don't know what other comedian I don't know what comedians I'm really into Monty Python most notably um I'm not really into hip hop as much or into like pop music or Bruno Mars. I'm into David Bowie and Frank Zappa for crying out loud. Um, I'm probably the most whitewashed Filipino, I guess you can say. But I don't like the idea that foreign bloggers, especially with those of immense socioeconomic privilege, and even though they say that they don't come from a silver spoon, well, being white means you do come from some privilege. And I do know that I do come from some privilege based off where I came from, as far as where the country I went from. But I always want to do content that's, you know, comes from a Filipino-American perspective, but can contribute to many different sort of, you know, it, it comes out of different milieu. Uh, and I mean that in the plural sense. Um, en français. So I want to give it a more artistic bend for me because I don't. Ne I never really thought of the travel and food blog that is interested is about being informational, as far as being right to the informative and having to explain everything. Uh, I don't want to do that. I want to do something that is creative, and hopefully you guys can stick around and be patient. With that, I'm hoping that's what I'm crossing my fingers for. Um, because things on this channel might get really weird. And, you know, I've kind of wanted to, you know, if it wasn't for the pandemic, we all would have taken you to Sikihor and kind of given you more about, you know, healing and more about shamanism or going up to the Ifugao province and showing you, like, you know, indigenous cultures, indigenous literature. Um... Things of that nature, because to me, you know, um, the old belief systems that, you know, predated Christianity and such, you know, there's a sort of syncretic melange that people don't really see that comes from um, the old animist days. So, I mean, that's kind of like one of the things I've been always, you know, thinking about was part of the things I wanted to highlight on this blog. Um, one of them, one of them. Well, amongst many other things, um, I did say, I think on this blog before, I'm kind of a believer in the derive as far as um, psychogeography is concerned, that just wandering around gives you a better, a better look, a better perspective at uh, the urban landscape than you would have gotten just from, you know, sightseeing or to the prescribed places. So I'm interested in things like that as well. Um, so anyway, I think this durian's done. I'm all the flies have flocked to the seeds, as it were, and I think it's kind of a good ending point, you know. Um, 
If you like this video, and I thank you for watching, if you've gotten this far, God help you. Um, and then, of course, if, um, better yet, if you can subscribe, I would definitely appreciate that. And, um, yeah, I'll see you on the next video, The Empire Never Ended.